Hey guys. Hi everyone. Let me put my earpiece in y'all. How is everyone? Did everybody enjoy the verses last night? Oh my God, we were turning up. Hold the line. Let's see. Okay. Oh man, the verses was legendary. Can you guys hear me okay? Everybody can hear me? Can you guys hear me? Noops in the building. What's up? There's just Leon. Yay. Hold on. Okay. We're going to go live with Leon in just a second. Here we go. Hey, Leon. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's going on? So excited to talk to you today. Where are you? Um, I'm in New York. Okay. And what are you doing in New York? Well, I just got back. I spent the last seven weeks in Aspen. Oh, wow. Was that like for a vacation? Yeah. Um, I have a house there. So. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So we just, you know, chilled out and, you know, do what we had to do. <laughs> Get it, <laughs> played, getting Played a lot of tennis. Well, that's fine. Getting away from America is very key. Uh, well, not America, but getting away is very key <laughs> from the COVID and the foolishness. You know, I've been very blessed to be away from the city and, and, and everybody during the whole, like, you know, madness. So yes. only thing I saw was a lot of deer. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, well, I don't even live in Aspen, and I, it's deer right outside my house in Alpharetta. So, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, animals are everywhere now. Yeah, they have a good time. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially when we try to build houses where they live. Oh, expect, yeah. Expect them to go someplace. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. No, no, no. <laughs> so, Leah, oh, my God. Okay, so how, first of all, how have you been dealing with this pandemic? Um, just at, as far as being, well, we, we know you as this amazing um, actor for many years. You're one of my favorites. I mean, all the way from Cool Runnings all the way on up, you know, it's thank, just, you know, thank, thank you, the man. bomb. I just love you. You know, I just love you as a person and a friend anyway. But as a musician, you know what I'm saying? Leon and the Peoples, how have you guys been folk, I mean, functioning during this pandemic? Because I don't think a lot of people understand that the stage was taken away from artists. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. And, and not only has it been taken away from us, but there's such an uncertainty. Yeah. Because we, one, we don't know when it's going to come back. And then we don't know when people are going to feel comfortable enough to mm -hmm. go back. Yeah. Okay. Because you know, when you're in a the theater, you know, you're arm to arm. You got to fight for the armrest with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, and people just are not feeling like doing that right now. I know I'm not. I know I'm not either. And okay. the mask ain't going to cut it. Right. Exactly. So whether <laughs> I'm on stage or not, I mean, I'm not expecting people right now to come see that. You know, now maybe I think outdoor shows. Yeah. Before mm -hmm. indoor shows. Yeah. So how have you been able to fulfill this musical void? You know what I'm saying? I mean, even production is a... Is artist. Well, I lost you there for a second. I saw you oh, yeah. your hands, but I didn't hear what you were saying. Oh, my God. Okay. So I said, I understand that, you know, production is a little sketchy right now anyway, but music, how are you able to fulfill that void um, right now? Are you still like meeting up with your band to play? Are you trying to do things through social media to, to be able to fulfill that musical void? Yeah. Well, there's a few things. Um, one, my band, we have a, um, a taped concert that we're doing um, in Hempstead, Long Island at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. It's like a four camera shoot. And we're actually going to do, you know, our latest album because we were going to tour with it this summer and we didn't get a chance to. So, um, right. 
So we're going to put it on tape for people. And, um, and then I've been doing other things. You know, JK. Um, yeah, you know, JK. I met you. Um, he was out in Aspen with me as well. And um, we did a song, an original song we performed um, for the 9-11 um, Aspen Fire Department. It's on YouTube if you want to mm -hmm. see. And, uh, and we also shot a video, uh, uh -huh. a new song as well. So, um, and then, you know, between that and my production company, I've been staying pretty busy because we're yeah. developing projects as well. So, you know, um, we have a, a Zoom call with my band that we mm -hmm. try to do weekly. It's checking on people, make sure they're doing well, talk about mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Um, now we're getting ready for our show. So that's great. And, you know, it's just, it's just going to be good to be with the band and be out there performing, you know, that's what yeah. we do. You know, so it's, um, I look forward to it. I look forward to going to shows. I look forward to everything, you know. Man. I think that we've always, especially people like ourselves, always had appreciation for the arts. Yeah. But now, I think our appreciation is just going to go through the roof because it's been taken from us. Yeah. Yeah. And in a way, it's almost like a, a good thing because, especially for Black music, because, you know, there was a point in time, and I'm not sure if it was just recent, but I mean, and maybe it wasn't just recent. Over the past couple of years, it almost seems like the appreciation for Black music in general has diminished. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, I think that social, the social injustice that we're seeing, as well as the lack of our voice musically being able to be articulated because of what's going on, has become, you know, a wake up call, if you know, mm -hmm. if you will. So it's almost like if I'm if I'm a, if I'm just a you know, if I'm well, I am a fan of music. So if I'm a fan of music, and I'm like, man, I'm watching what's going on on, you know, on television as far as politics and social injustice and all of this foolishness that we have to endure on a day to day basis. And I can't even go. The, I have to go all the way back to the classics. You know, <laughs> I have to go all the way back to Marvin Gaye to get, you know, to get to get lifted or, you know what I'm saying? So. It's, and, and then we don't have the concert, so we're resulting to things like Versus. So did you see, which is great. I mean, Versus is like kind of sort of all we have that's kind of, you know, giving us a piece of our artist. Did you see um, Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight last night? Yeah, I saw most of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was lit. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, for, for us, you know, to, they're legends, you know. Yeah. We, we, we saw them in their prime. You know, mm -hmm. when we were young kids, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and when, you, when you're a kid, the impression that you have, like your heroes, like they're at another place for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? For, for your whole life. Uh, hello. You know, unless they do something to disappoint you. Right. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But they're, they're like here. It's like, you know, no, it doesn't matter who comes along. Like to me, every time I see and talk to Smokey Robinson, I got to pinch myself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, because when I was a kid, like, that was someone that I thought was, like, insane. So, <laughs> so, like, how was it then being able to embody characters that you looked up to? Because you play in Five Harvey's, Harvey's and The Temptations. Mm -hmm. I mean, that had to be something, be, having to morph into that, into the people that you looked up to, or to the music, the era that you looked up to. Mm -hmm. So, what was that like? You know what I'm saying? Having to morph into that era. You know, I think that because of my approach to the mm -hmm. role, um, it wasn't really a factor because I couldn't let that factor into it. You mm -hmm. know? Because I, I, I have to be that person. I have to be in that era. You know, so for me, you know, I kind of took a, you know, what I was most comfortable with, a method approach to acting, you know, so I stayed in my character the entire time. So I was David Ruffin. I lived in that era. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I felt the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I think that if I allowed the weight of, you know, oh my God, this is Motown. Oh my God, I'm about to do Ed Sullivan's show with David Ruffin. Are you crazy? Like, if I thought like that, right. I would have to be the person that you see on screen. So I don't, I don't allow those kind of things to even enter into it. I just, I just go into the role and just become the person and just stay in it. It's just so interesting because you're equally musically inclined as um, you're acting. So it's deep because you have, in, as an actor, you have to embody and get into specific characters. But then as an artist, as a singer, you actually can sing. Like you actually do have that, um, 
you know, musical gift. So it's not like you're pretending to be something. It's almost like you can embody the person because it's very close. Did you feel like there were any similarities anyway in any of your characters, especially the musical characters you play? Because you play Little Richard as well. And they're all very different characters. So it's like, did you ever feel like this is, man, this is similar to what I do with Leon and the people, you know? <laughs> um, no, I, no, I never feel as though musically, I mean, the most art ever imitated life would be in a movie um, called, that I did called The Price of Kissing. Mm. Yeah. I played this bouncer that wanted to be a reggae singer. And I do this song, oh. do a reggae version of Daddy's Home. And mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the most art imitates life. Those, the characters that I've been blessed to play or portray, whether real life or whether fictional, um, that we're seeing is it's, it's, it was just um, me, you know, becoming who they are. Because the most important thing when you portray, especially a character that actually walked and talked on this earth and has relatives, mm -hmm. you, it's important that you capture their essence. You don't have to look like them. You don't have to be them. You need to capture their essence. And that's the most important thing, you know. And so if you look at, you know, biopics from even way back in the 70s, and stuff with Dinah Ross playing Lady Sings the Blues. And One of my favorites. Like that, right. And you, know, you never would think Lady Sings, you never look at Dinah Ross and think Billie Holiday. No way. Right. But she captured that essence and that's and that's what takes you through a story and 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 that is so right because and what's crazy is when i was younger and i watched billy holiday when i watched diana ross do it just in my just for me i always felt like she's billy holiday to me <laughs> like mm -hmm. and i and i and i love the versions even the versions of diana's singing versions right better than the actual Billie Holiday version. Like I had to really try to get into the Billie Holiday version because when I was younger, for me, Billy Dee Williams and Diana Ross, that was real to me. That was the true story. Hey, <laughs> they listen, were the real characters. That, listen, that is the way it is with people when they love a story or when they get mm -hmm. into a story, especially our people, mm -hmm. okay? Now, <laughs> I, can, I can tell you stories that, that have embarrassed me. Like, for example, I performed with the... Um, I performed with the um, the Temptations, the Real Temptations at um, mm. FS, right? And um, and the day before, they were doing an autograph signing, and they mm. asked me to come down to the convention center if I wanted to with the autograph signing. So I get down there, right? And literally, these people were pushing the Temptations out of the way to get to me, and I'm saying, wait a second, these are the Temptations. Are you him? They're, like, they're like, no. To the temptations is you to us, right? You gave up, <laughs> right. and so it, you know it's like it, it, in that much. And even with the five harpies, which mm -hmm. is actually a fictional story, right? Yes. Do you know how many times I'll be going through the airport, whatever, and so I get, yo, what, like, when you going on tour? And I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, they feel me on the people. They're like, and like, no, we're talking about the five harpies. <laughs> Piece is not real. <laughs> this is classic, but it was kind of real, wasn't it? It was based off of the Dales, right? No, no, no. It no. wasn't. Oh, okay. Okay, so now, Selena, there's something you have to do. Okay. To me, and you're gonna love this. You have to watch this documentary called "Making the Five Heartbeats." Oh, okay. Robert made a documentary about the making of the movies from the time he was a little boy to when he was on the set of Mahogany to mm. when he had the idea. So you're gonna be surprised all the people who auditioned for this movie. Like uh -huh. you gotta see this documentary. It's streaming right now on UMC. So who okay, I'm gonna have to go see that. Yeah, and, no, and I gotta catch this kissing movie too, because that slipped past me. <laughs> <laughs> now, who then I thought it was Marvin Jr. that was see, singing the lead in the movie. Who was the who were the voices then that were singing? What in, in, in on the in the five heartbeats? Yeah, in the five heartbeats. In the Five Heartbeats, I don't remember all the singers' names. That Robert had cast them before he cast the actors, because mm. he knew when he was writing, he knew what each person's voice sounded like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, I, you know, I cannot tell you that 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 I do not have that information. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to investigate. I'm sure you can find. It. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure someone someone probably listening to this will tell somebody, and they probably get and they're gonna probably send it to the inbox. Now, that was me. That was me. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, these are classic. You know, Five Heartbeats, The Temptation, these are our classic music movies. Mm -hmm. And um, you're right. Like, it's just, like, to me, you David Ross. I, Diana Ross is Billie Holiday. I mean, it is what it is. But I think that's good for us. I'm waiting on this Marvin Gaye movie. Somebody got to play Marvin. I don't know why the people don't want to do Marvin. This, I mean, this is classic Donny Hathaway. We need that era. We need and, many you know, this, and, you, know, I, you know, the problem with movies and these biopics in the past have been the, is music rights. Mm. People are not, there's too many different people own different music rights and they weren't going to let them go for whatever right. reason. And, you know, people have tried, a couple of people have tried to make Marvin movies with just one song and you can't do that. You know? Yeah, that's um, true. So whether it's Marvin or anybody else, um, you know, you just you gotta have that music. That's yeah. That is really when you're making a movie, a biopic. That's the first thing you secure is the music rights because you can't make it without that. And, you, and usually that's the selling point of the movie, hearing the new remastered versions of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. It is very hard to get clearance, especially a Marvin Gaye catalog. That's probably a tough one because yeah, I'm, yeah. he ha it's even hard to sample him. It's hard to sample him. They like, don't flow. For example, like say if you wanted the Beatles, right? Mm -hmm. but then you're gonna have to give them a piece of your movie. Oh man, <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> if not the whole movie, because uh, I remember. They don't play. I remember they they called me in and I recorded um, um, a reggae version of "Here Comes the Sun" mm. um, for the opening titles of Cool Runnings, and um, they wanted a half a million dollars for us. And Disney was like, "Nah." Oh yeah, that's a fool. <laughs> A half a million dollars is nuts. I guess they say, look here, it's a bunch of us. We need to be able to get well, if, they knew, if they knew how the record business was going to go, they would have taken it. They would have yeah. taken anything. Because <laughs> it's definitely not the same. Anything. This is true tea. Yeah. And let's let's move on to your music. Because what I'm seeing, too, is people in here like, oh, Leon Singh, only a couple of people. They're like, Leon Singh, yes, Leon Singh. As a matter of fact, me and Leon have a song called Bottles and Cans. <laughs> okay, then? <laughs> he sounds wonderful on as usual. <laughs> Thank you very much, Leon. Which you all should go research that, because that was the bomb. And um, you just talked about how you released an album right before this pandemic. So did I. So I know what that is. But talk to us about the new album. Also, Lee, um, Leon sings reggae um, because you are West Indian, correct? Yeah, but it's a mixture between reggae and soul. We don't play Okay, it. so he's... Yeah, he's like, if you come to listen to us, you're going to hear a mixture between reggae and soul music. Okay, so he's a reggae soul artist. That's and, what we're Speaking of reggae soul, we must mention someone who brought that real soul to reggae who just passed away. To a tidbit. Yeah. Tibbets. You know, we gotta we gotta give me I name. saw that on Moni Love's page. I saw that yeah. down to Moni Love's page. Yeah, yeah, I posted something as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, you know, I'm a huge fan of reggae. Oh yes. Um yeah, the reggae album, didn't you? Yeah, me and Music Soul Child, we did a yeah. reggae soul album. We yeah, exactly called nine. And uh we decided we wanted to infuse what we do in our craft of R and B. So it's kind of like R and B reggae, you know, right. which is so we're both soul singers, so same. Yeah, concept. of course, of course. Yeah. But we wanted to merge R and B and put it in and and merge the two, like with reggae music. So we didn't want to try to sing or sound reggae, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because that's whack. But you wanted to do your own thing. Right. We wanted that's to that. exactly pay it's homage exactly to what we do to to both concepts. It, I'm yeah. representing too. I got my 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 Bob Marley on. <laughs> <laughs> But um, so let's talk about. Oh, and guys, if you if you guys have any questions for Leon, please put them in the box, um, and we're gonna answer them at the uh, ha the back end of this conversation. But I want to talk about social injustice, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about a little bit about the movement of Black people, and where do you think you know we need to go in this moment? Now we already know that social social injustice has existed in everything, you know, it's been systemic. So we already know that we've been dealing with this for many, for forever, actually, forever. Mm -hmm. um, but in this time, in this moment, in the middle of a pandemic, with this president who's outrageous, I mean, I don't even have any more bad words to use to describe him because it just is ne it's never good enough. Um, but in this era, what do you think now is the responsibility of twofold question? One, Artists, us, what's our responsibility? And two, our community. 
what is the responsibility of us right now? What can we do? I know there's so many people that are like, well, how can I protest? What can, what can my stance be? What do we do next besides voting, which is a big one? Well, um, yeah. I mean, voting is the, the thing on the table right now. And it's something that it's not about you voting. It's about you making sure that other people vote, that don't mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. that, that's the main thing right now. Um, as far as us as a people, well, like you said, systemic racism and um, injustice, inequality have been something that has been part of the Black experience from the time that we came on a boat from Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, they have been trying to not give us the same life that they have, but who's they? Exactly. That's, you know, and so for the most important thing that we can do um, is one, embrace our allies, which we have many of now. And the reason mm -hmm. the movement is so big is that because there is as many, if not more white people and other people that are not black and brown marching for us as well. Mm -hmm. The way it will change. Mm -hmm. Let's embrace our allies and the people who, whether they're our color or not, that are fighting for the same cause because strength is in numbers. Mm -hmm. okay, and if we talk about being treated equally, then we must treat other people equally. We must give other people, whether they're black or brown, the same kind of love and, and, and chances to be who they are as we expect for us. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do. And, and then on a deeper level, <laughs> you know, black lives matter. It's a very interesting um, three words, because if black lives matter, which of course they do, and all lives cannot matter until black lives matter. Mm -hmm. But who's to say that black lives matter? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think first we have to say as people that black lives matter. Yeah. And, and our, yeah. There, there, there are 10 times more murders from our own people to our, to our own people than any police officers have ever done, okay? We are killing each other at a rapid rate. You know that from your hometown of Chicago, and now it's hitting us in New York. Okay? They're turning up in if, New York. If, if we don't respect ourselves, if we don't think our lives matter, how can you expect anyone else to? This is true. This so, is true. So you want to know what we need to do as a people. We need to first realize that we're not putting enough emphasis on us. You know, mm -hmm. people, people look at, um, say, people who are Jews that are here in this country, how they look out for one another, how they care about one another's community and stuff like that. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. That's what makes a great world. We need to do that for our own communities. We need to care. Yeah. And the first thing we need to do is to stop this killing amongst ourselves. Mm hmm Well, you know, I, I, think, I think you're dead on as far as we need to be, in terms of us taking the, the focus and going inward in our own communities for our own selves. And, and further than that, us personally, each person has to start caring and loving one another. Now you start. Now you're starting to tap into the mental and well, the mental well-being of Black people, just in general. How we don't seek out therapy to be okay. How we're not doing the things that we're supposed to be doing to be okay. But then too, I think part of this. I definitely know that there's Black on Black crime. I am from Chicago, but I also know that Chicago is not even on that top ten list as far as crime is concerned. And I also know that that narrative was exacerbated by the press. However, and I think that that narrative is exacerbated by the press totally. Um, they call it black on black crime, but also white people kill white people at an, ex an extremely increasingly rate as well, because that's who's in the vicinity of where you're living. Now, unfortunately, we can't afford as a people to be that reckless with our own lives because we're already fighting for them out the gate. So in, in, the, in, the respect, in that respect, 
You're absolutely right. We have to be more conscious of caring about each other because our life depends on it. We're not in a predicament where we can just frivolously um, kill, each, kill ourselves off because there's already enough of that agenda embedded inside of one, our history and two, the system. So if it's not with just outright police officers, it's in our food, it's in our diets, it's in our um, the way that doctors treat us, um, the way that the medical field treats us. I mean, there's so many different um, uh, insurance way the insurance company treat us. The way exactly. Bank. Yeah, it's on and on and on. It's on and on and on. So but we don't have the liberty to uh, to be the privilege. The things that we can't control. Okay? Right. If we can, if we can march and protest, you know, for the for the 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 death of another unarmed black man, then we can march and protest in our own communities to get the drugs and the drug dealers and the gangs out of our communities. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so, um, I mean, I think it starts, I mean, everything starts at home. It starts at home, you know, and it also starts with education. You know, mm -hmm. we, do, we, we live in a world in which we are taught in school things that aren't even true, okay? This is true. And so, but, it, but we must make it a point of, trying to be good parents, trying mm -hmm. to teach our kids, also educating our young black men and daughters about how to behave if they are stopped by the police. Because that's yeah. a problem as well. Okay, That is a problem as well. And, and it's something that's going to happen. I mean, I've been stopped by the police seven, eight times, you know, done all kinds of things. But I tell you, my father was a, was a police officer at one point. So I, I knew how to behave or how to act. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of a, a lot of young kids don't. A lot mm -hmm. of kids are just upset and angry. Why it's been happening? Next thing you know, they're in the squad car or worse. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. unnecessary. Which is which is still not to their fault. Um, I mean, because white people do the same thing, and then they they walk away or they get oh, no, no, without a doubt. But, but we already know the cards are stacked against us. This is true. So we have All to right, be smarter. That's, we, that's something we have to teach our kids. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that cop is coming over here looking. Oh, please, I hope he or she give me an excuse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're waiting. Yeah, so, I mean, if you get the wrong cop. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm just saying is that we have to be on top of things. We must be aware. We must be woke. We must know the world we're living in and be ready to succeed regardless. Mm-hmm. Now, where do, you, where do you think, Leon, so, like, let's take low socioeconomic neighborhoods. Pretty much the ghetto, the projects, the hood, you know, the places that we've, we've come from, you know, African Americans. And not all of us, you know, we all weren't raised in the hood. Some of us were raised middle class and everything. But even if you were raised middle class, you still have family that was from the hood. You still have friends that was from the hood. And you, you, were, you were still um, mindful and literate of the problems and challenges that our people, our brothers and sisters are up against all the time in these communities that if, if I might add, were kind of sort of designed for us to be in or the structure of it and the way it has become based on, you know, we can go through the whole, oh, well, they didn't give us this and that and the 40 acres and the mule. And so this was the setup and this is why, you know, it was never designed for us to thrive. We already know that. So with that being known and said, and people being able to use that excuse, what is the new thing we need to do to combat those excuses, right? Because it's just like people saying, well, I'm not voting because the president is this, it's still white man, or it still ain't, we still not going to get what we want. What do you say? What do we need to say to people that don't have this kind of hope and this kind of um, incentive or intention to go past what has been the norm and not want to lean on the excuse or the excuses that we've been subject to or been tri or, or been uh, brainwashed to adapt to. How can we get past the mindset? Because it's the mindset, right? You know, it's, it's all in your mind, basically. Not every time, but there is a way to overcome on things. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of Black people don't feel or they don't have the hope or they don't have the knowledge. So when you, when people say, like, for instance, people say defund the police, right? They're not saying stop, stop police officers. What they're saying is take some of those funds, put them into the communities. But what do the communities need to do once those funds are allocated there? Mm. 
Well, that's a whole, yeah, the defund the police, that's a whole other situation because, you know, most, most um, African Americans in this country don't want the police funded, police defunded. They want, matter of fact, they want better policing. <laughs> they want to make sure they're safe. They want to make sure that when they call the police, the police don't show up, you know, an hour later. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what they mm -hmm. want. They want yeah. good that's what I want. I want good exactly. police. I, if, and if I want, I want both. I want communities and good police. Right, right, right. Exactly. And you know, the police. The, the you know, the problem with the police is 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 twofold. One, you know, ever since nine eleven, um, there's been a militarization of the police department to where they they're like they act like military, and they and they've recruited a lot of people from the military. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this you see a lot of the rough behavior. You know, mm. why is it that somebody who's not resisting is ever thrown on the hood of a car? Mm -hmm. Why? Exactly. What is I mean, the, what I mean, is that? I mean, let me tell you something. It's so ingrained that when I play a character in a movie or a TV show who's not resisting arrest, I'm thrown against the hood of the car. Wow. Okay. All right. That's so, in the script. <laughs> right, right. That's what I'm saying. So that's one thing that has to stop. Okay. But the most important thing with the police it's very simple. The police have to police themselves. The police are good, but they let the, they let the bad apples take them down. That's a good if point. You, if the police were to get rid of their own bad apples, they stop this whole thing about they don't talk or they don't tell on another officer. Well, mm -hmm. if you don't let that bad officer kill somebody else and take down your whole police department, you're a fool. And you're responsible. Exactly. That's your people. Right. So what I'm saying is that it's twofold. Police need to police themselves, okay? And mm -hmm. they need to stop acting like they're in the military when they're just asking people and keeping people safe. That's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. so. so police reform, that's one. And you know what? I saw, there's a video going around, right? So it, it, it was right outside Clayton, Georgia. And so the two, police, two white police officers pulled over a Lyft driver. There was a black man in the back. He pulled him over for a taillight, apparently. And there's a black man in the back with his children. Um, you don't see in the video how he got to the ground. So we don't know if he was cussing the police officer out or whatever the case may be. Regardless, he didn't have a weapon. He didn't seem to be resisting arrest. It took two of them to muscle this probably 115 pound black man down to the floor. Um, and they were punching him in the face. He had no weapons. They were but, but, punching but, him in the face. I'm trying to figure this out. But if, but... <laughs> Why be wrestling him or punching him unless he's resisting arrest? Well, this is what George Floyd was asking. <laughs> you know, this is what Sandra Bland was asking. There's a lot of, um, again, the improper uh, protocol of police officers. Because my thing is, okay, let's say he was resisting arrest and everything. Handcuff him and put him in the car and keep him moving. Why are we still tussling with him on the floor? But another police officer, a black police officer, pulls up on the scene and pushes <clears> him off. <throat> He kind of polices the police. And it, was, it wasn't until then that they automatically stopped what they were doing and handcuffed him. It was almost like they were going to keep going until somebody else came and, then, and blew the whistle. And they end up getting fired and released. And, the, the, you know, the chief is mad now and all this stuff. But, 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 I also, but if I'm not mistaken, didn't they turn on that police officer? The rest of the department? Oh, I don't know if they turn this is this new one. I don't know if they return they turn on the police. Him and, 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 um, the black police officer? Yeah, because you know he broke the code. That's a fool. But he saved a life. He saved the whole situation. What if that man would have died? Wait, wait, wait. He saved their lives. Those and are lives. He helped them out. If yeah. he would have died, then now we're in another, you know, we're in a whole other thing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, and then, and then also too, remember when we were watching the protests here in Atlanta and the black woman cussed out those police officers for being, um, uh, you know, for doing too much to the protesters and, you know, wrestling people down. And because we, I think we do, we have to understand that police officers are, are people. Mm -hmm. So in their brains, they're people, they're not machines, they're human beings and human beings do human being shit that's not always good. You know what I'm saying? Just because they have a badge doesn't mean that they're exempt from snapping out. And um, you know, I, like the movie that I did with um, Ice-T and them, The Equal Standard, Tobias Trevelyan and, and uh, Ice-T and, and Sticky Fingers and all of them. And it was about accountability. You know what I'm saying? It was about accountability within the police force. So it was like the same kind of thing. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? There has to be some level of accountability between each other. And we also talked about and touched on in, in that movie, like there's no real psychiatric evaluations when um, choosing police officers. I mean, but they should, that, that's one of the most important things. The, so, first, the first thing you should, first thing a guy comes in, you should go like this. Has anyone ever thrown you in a lock and locked you in? <laughs> you know, Are you like, crazy? I want to like, know, <laughs> know if you have a vendetta against anybody. Yeah, any we reason. To, exactly. You we know. need you to sit up here in this lie detector test, and we need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> but you no, know, really, you, you you have to do that, and that and yeah. that's something that needs to be taken care of. You know, yeah. you can't have the wrong people in there, but you have to also realize that you know, just like police officers, just the same thing in the military. You know, they're taking in all types of people and and, and people that should, man, they, should, they, they should not have a gun. Yeah, because then when they're done, or, oh my God, and they come out of the military and based and what the, what being in the military already does mentally, mm -hmm. my God today. And I know a few veterans that, you know, they just can't snap out of it. They can't snap out of certain concepts. Oh yeah. Of the yeah. mental anguish. That's traumatic experiences, man, that I couldn't even imagine what it's like, you know. Unless, you know, I, unless I was playing in the movie, then I can imagine. Then you can, ha you'd have to. <laughs> now, you know, Leon, a long, a long time ago, I never forget, um, you remember when I had this video that I wanted to get on BET, and you knew you were like the, close with Don, with uh, Bob Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Leon, I'm trying to get, you know, the BET and, you know, like, oh, well, send it to me and I'll send it over to Bob. And that ended up working and Bob put it on BET. So, you know, just always thank you again for that. But one of the of things that you said that I've always stuck, that has always stuck with me that I thought was so awesome. And this was like, man, that was maybe 2003. Mm -hmm. You told me that you got, there was an organization of black uh, uh, successful men that you guys were all in. It was like yourself, Denzel Washington, like all these amazing black men, Bob Johnson. What is it, are you still in that group? And I always found that to be so fascinating because in my mind, it has always, I've always envisioned it as black men helping, supporting, and being there for each other, successful black men helping to push each other forward. Are you still in that organization? Well, it's not an organization, we call, we call it the crew. The crew. Are you still yeah. in this crew? <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, of course. You know, crew, crew only dies if we die. Okay. <laughs> but um, the person who created the crew, the person who brought us all together, was the late, um, great um, <laughs> Butch Lewis. Mm. And that was our guy. He's the one who brought us all together. And, um, and um, we've had some great times together. And we all stay in touch. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have as we don't have as many outings since Butch has been gone, but um, right, yeah, but we're crew forever. Now let me ask you this: Do you guys? Oh well, you guys, you say you still talk. Do you think that, or do you guys ever talk about what you could do in this moment um, for the movement, even if it's voting or voting initiatives, or you know what I'm saying, any type of protest to help out the movement right now? Especially well, black men and mental mental aware, mental awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, we we just talk, we talk amongst ourselves because we're all doing individual things mm -hmm. um, for it. Um, if there was any way for us to come together for um, a common cause, we would in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, everyone is just doing you know their own thing because it's it's a very weird time right now. Um, for an entertainer, actor, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we, you know, they keep saying, oh, we're going back to work here, we're going back to work here, we're going back. So, so we're kind of mm -hmm. like halfway in the door, halfway out. Oh, should we be home now? Should we be getting ready? Should I be shaving now? Should I be growing my mustache back now? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, like what's going on? You know, like, you know, and so it's hard to commit to almost anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because realistically, the only places that someone like myself needs to be um, would be in a battleground state, you mm -hmm. know, trying to get people to make sure they vote because here in New York, it doesn't matter. California, right. it doesn't matter. 
we, they're going to vote overwhelmingly Democratic. And Trump is from here. Mm. So there's no one that likes him. Because <laughs> yeah. we know him. Right. <laughs> so you know he's a fool. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like, please. So, um, you know, but it's the battleground states. It's those states that, that swung things before. And, um, you know, I just got, I just going to tell all of you right now that if you think that things are bad right now, let this man get reelected. He is being openly divisive and racist. He is not caring about anything. He, he always has a vendetta against people. Can you imagine how he'd be prancing around like a peacock, lashing out at every single person that went against him, Man. which is almost everybody? Which is almost everybody. Can you imagine what things would be like right now when, when, and, and we'll still be in the middle of a pandemic? And still be in the pandemic. Listen, I'm telling you, it is like, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's life or death. It's, it's life. detrimental. I it's agree. Death. But, you know, back to your original, original question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. We're, we're conversing what, about everything. What, what do we do to tell people that, you know, don't think they should vote or why they should vote and, and its importance? Well, this is what I would tell, okay, is that this is not about us. You've lived most of your life, Selena, so have I. This is about our children. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the ones that are going to reap. You, you're already successful, and you're going to continue to be successful. And God willing, so will I. But now they have to go through this world, okay? And do you want them going through a world that is almost mirroring the race riots of the 60s right now? Do you want them in, in 2025, 2030, talking about, you know, whether some kid called them nigger? or whether they're being you know, arrested by the police for doing nothing or shot or killed? I mean, really? Do you want to be one of them mothers crying about their kid? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's about. It's not about us. It's about them. So whoever you're talking to, if they got kids, if they got nieces and nephews that they care about, talk about that to them. Because that's what should turn them. Because that's, that's what it's really about. That's real talk. That's very, very real talk. And, and it's, it's, it's good that our younger generation is radical enough to want change as well. You know what? Let's, ask, let's go to the question box, Leon, and see what the people, no pun intended, Leon and the people, right. have to say. <laughs> um, oh, um, let me see. Let's see. Let's, I like this. This is a good one. This is Sweetie Pie from New York. She says, how does Leon cleanse his mind after a role? So we talked about you embodying characters, but then how do you get out of these characters? for a second. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. I'm um, here. Well, luckily, luckily for me, it's very easy because um, as soon as they say rap, I'm Leon. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I miss me a little bit at that point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, where's my boy? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Luckily for me, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, man. Is, is it the same like that for for any of the other artists that other actors that you know? Like, do you have you ever um, had a comp? I'm sure you have. have has there ever been, ever been any situations where some of your fellow counterparts are like, "Man, I just can't." Like, I still think I'm this person. I just I just can't get my life together. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I I haven't run across that person, and personally, I hope I don't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then if that is true. Then there's that. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Um, let's see. Okay. Some of these questions, like, they just cut off. 
let me see, let's see. This is Suzette Perry Blakely. She says, I've been a big fan of Leon ever since The Temptations and The Five Heartbeats. Who is his favorite um, artist? And who, I don't know what she says. Can you see what else she says? It says, who is his favorite artist? No, because it's not coming. It's, it's, yeah, it's like it's weird. It's like you, yeah. you don't see the whole still thing. The, I still have the last question up. Okay. Well, this one's up now. It says, I've been a big fan of Leon ever since The Temptations and The Five Heartbeats. Who is his favorite artist? And then it says something else. And who is maybe his favorite? Who is his motivation? Who is he inspired by? Wow. When you say artist, I don't know what you mean. You know, do you mean someone who paints? You mean someone who sings? Someone who acts? <laughs> um, give, me, give me two. Give me who is your favorite, favorite musical artist and who is your favorite actor? Wow. I don't have a favorite. There's no way on earth I could have a favorite. <laughs> it's just like, it's far too many. There's far too many great singers like yourself out there who I love, you know? So, you know, yeah. I, 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 I couldn't say that. And when it comes to acting, you know, I've always been, you know, kind of, I've leaned towards, you know, the, the old school actors, you know, like mm -hmm. Errol Flynn and Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. 48. Sydney Portier. Sydney Portier, yeah. I mean, they were, they were like real movie stars to me, and you know, and so um, I kind of, you know, when I think about actors, I think about, you know, those actors, actors that, I, that I'll never have a get chance to work with, unfortunately. <laughs> well, um, who are then, who are you listening to? Because that's a good one, because like, it's, a, it's hard for me to say too, like, who's my favorite artist, because there's so many different dynamics. But yeah. who are you? Who and then, are you and not only to? that, then you say your favorite artist, you know you're going to get at least seven phone calls <laughs> from your artist friends. Like, who? Who'd you say? <laughs> oh, so that's how you feel. That's how you really feel about me, right? <laughs> I hate those questions. You know, they ask me, like, oh, so what actress would you like to play opposite? And I'm like, oh, don't do that to me. Everybody, just anybody, right? Yeah, I'm like, don't do that to me. It's like, I'm going to say one person. You know, it's like, there's no way, you know? So um, what was the question again? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then who are you listening to? Like, and that's, that's legit. Cause it's like, you know, you know how music is, whatever is going on in, in you know, in your life, you got to kind of listen to that soundtrack that kind of helps facilitate those, that energy. Yeah. You know what though? I, I, I haven't really, this pandemic is, is had me completely, which shouldn't be, out of touch wow. with any, like with most new music. Mm -hmm. I've, well, been, that's, yeah, that's... I've been playing Otis Redding, mm -hmm. Sam Cooke, mm -hmm. okay. um, I listened to the, I listened to the soundtrack recently of um, the movie that, that was my five heartbeats. Mm. My five heartbeats was Sparkle. Come on, somebody! Somebody ought to shout it. Sparkle, yes, and, and don't was, and was, don't was, get my, don't get the Claudine. My five heartbeats. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, yes, yeah, so that's what I've been listening to, you know, lately. I just I don't know why I've been just listening to a lot of like old music, good music, mm -hmm. obviously. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing during most of COVID. And then I was the host of um, Bob Marley Tough Gun Radio on Sirius XM. Mm. Of course, I'm you know going over my Molly collection because I you mm -hmm. know I had to play I had to play all my cuts. <laughs> yeah, I love Bob Molly. I, I have a good time with him. He he's for every man, every season, every stage. I mean, every every time in my life, I remember like having having to listen to Bob Molly, like having to listen to him, like being mm -hmm. forced <laughs> to go to Bob Marley, You know, um, but I I'm just I'm a, I'm just like a music muse so I just love all kinds of music all across the board and I have to agree with you I have been Marvin Gaye in it down I have been Otis Redding it down um I have been listening to old music and and I think it's because you know our bodies they you know from what's going on I know for me what's going on our bodies ask for what's the soundtrack of what's happening mm -hmm. and unfortunately we don't, we're not getting that and we haven't been getting that in the new music. I mean, let's just keep it 100. We haven't been getting this substance, this lyrical substance, this musical chord changing, you know, the real um, musicianship of music. Um, we haven't been getting that.
Well, you know what, though, but I have to say, in defense, there are artists. There are That's trying. They are. That's that. You just said, unfortunately, they don't get the same push as the people doing whatever is happening at the moment. That's true. Whatever's trendy at the moment. That's all. That's I mean, true. That, that's what it's really about. That's and real talk. The fortunate part about it is that, you know, young people don't get to hear that music because it doesn't get pushed like that. That's true. That is very true. And that is very true for R&B music. I can attest to that um, uh, firsthand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very true for R&B because I remember in the 90s, R&B was like pop. You know what I'm saying? But right. now, you know, it's almost like if you the only way to get our music get r&b music or soul music for instance because there is a difference there is a difference um the only way to get r&b or soul music is through shows like you got to go to the show that's the only way i mean you can hear it here and there you can hear it on social media and all of that but it's not going to be pushed that is mm -hmm. very very true it's not gonna be pushed yeah. so you won't get the true essence of that music unless you actually go to the show right um, i listen to a lot i listen to a lot of um British solo, mm. so a lot of London. Mm -hmm. I've, always been, I've always been kind of akin to that. Um, you probably hear some of it in our music. Um, yeah. And so, you you do you tour over there um, frequently? Well, did you? No, because <laughs> we ain't nobody I, doing I, that I now. Played, I have not played London. I've been over there as an actor. But wow. I have not done my music there, although we have music on the radio there. So you I should be that. definitely be there. I mean, they love wait, reggae. Wait a second. Nothing's happening right now. I'm just <laughs> saying in general. You know. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. I mean, even you look at the, like the town of Joyner cruise. Like, when are people going to feel comfortable going on a cruise again? That's And that's way too close comfort. That's and that, like. And that was one of the major contributors to it, you know, coming over here. So yeah. You know, who knows? It's like, it's, it's just so uncertain. So uncertain. Yeah. And I have like bookings coming in for like 521. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like May of 2020. But the truth is, we don't even know if that's going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's how... in, it in Broadway. It's not going to come back until 2022, maybe. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's crazy. That's awful. And yeah. Broadway is ever running, constant running. But New York ain't playing. You know, uh, they, don't, they don't play. Y'all not playing in New York. Y'all said, listen here, we're we going to get a hold of this here pandemic. We're not <laughs> getting ready to keep playing with y'all. We're going to shut everything down. No, 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 no. It's like, it's crazy. Like, I go on to Atlanta. I got to go to Atlanta and um, see my daughter. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out. Because if I go there, they, well, <laughs> I got to quarantine when I come back. I don't got time to quarantine. I don't have a month to take out to see somebody for four days. <laughs> it's a fool. And when you come here, it's the twilight zone. Because in some places, they're not even wearing masks. They're not walking around with not a care in the world. I you saw got, two got churches a, open. Oh, you got a Republican government. Oh, he's a fool. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's outrageous. He's stupid. And he's outrageous. And I just saw two churches in service just yesterday. It was two churches in service just yesterday. It wasn't my church. It's my, my pastor don't play. But it was two churches in service. And I thought to myself, what is well, going on in the well, church? Well, are they socially distancing? I don't know. I just thought that the parking lot was full. My, 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 my mom is a um, deacon at the church. And so she, um, they, they've gone back. I can't keep her from going to mass. But um, she, they've gone back to mass. But it's like there's spots where people have to stay in. Mm-hmm. And, well, maybe... and then one has to wear a mask. And well, see, because, they... because for one thing, it's the law. You can't go inside any place exactly. without a mask. That's the law. Yeah. So isn't that the law down there? No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> now, there is individual. So there are some places in Georgia where it is not the law. You know what I'm saying? Now, there are some, some counties, places. Some counties have laws. Some counties be like, we don't believe in that. You know what I'm saying? These are the people that's Trump supporters. You know, they don't believe in, you know, um, they don't believe in none of that foolishness. But for, like, where I live, people wear masks all the time. People, you know, they turn it up. But you can, you can come in some of the counties out here. Nobody's wearing masks. Nobody, nobody's caring about any of that. You know, and probably in New York, you know what I'm saying? It's because it's a mandate. 
it is people are are mindful. So I can see you being in church and it's like, all right, well, we're at capacity because it's half of what we would normally have and people are sitting in specific places and there's things mm -hmm. of that nature. But I doubt that that's going on here. Mm -hmm. I doubt that that's going on here. It's um and a lot of people that come to New York that I know that are friends, they're like, yo, like, y'all don't gotta wear masks. Like, <laughs> like this is crazy. Y'all don't have to, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, all we can do is what we're supposed to do or, you know, that's all we can do. But I only go five places anyway, maybe even four. Because I just, that was before the pandemic. I'm not a big going and hanging out type of person anyway. I'm, I'm more of a hermit anyway. So it doesn't <laughs> scare me that quarantine was like, oh, great. An excuse to do nothing. I'm here for it, <laughs> you know. I want to hang out with a bunch of people and take it and take a risk what, during that's the pandemic. The that's I, dumb. I, you know what I think it is? I think if you're around here long enough in life, you realize that this is some unusual part of my friend's shit, okay? <laughs> and, 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 and this is not like anything we've ever seen before. We've never lived through anything like this before. Yeah. We never will again. And it's like, if you're not taking this serious, like, I don't know what in the hell you are. I've, I've never seen anything like this. You? No, I've never seen anything like this. And I don't want to see anything like this ever again. Crazy. Well, what we do want to see, Leon, is you thrive. And what we do want to see is all the rest of the projects that you're dealing with. And what I know everybody in here wants to know is, first of all, the name of your last album, um, where can we get it, and any projects that you're working on that we should be looking for that's coming up? Um, let's see. Well, the name of our latest album is, is Love is a Beautiful Thing. Okay. And um... oh, I have that shirt. I have the t-shirt that's Love yeah, is Beautiful right. I was looking for, yes, I have my Leon and the Pika shirt, but I have the Love is Beautiful right, Well, that's the thing, because well. the single came out a long time before the album. Right. And then, um, and then um, that single, as well as Beautiful, the first song off there, both charted in the top 20 in the, in the first week it came out on Billboard. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, just look out for, we had, we had a single that was really popular where everywhere we played, we couldn't wait to play it all summer because sometimes I wish I was single. Mm. And, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, people just love this song, and um, because it's really it's it's a it, the title catches you, but it's really it's really a love song about going back to the days when you first met. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, so we're just looking forward to doing it. You can get you can buy our album any way you buy music, iTunes, mm -hmm. Amazon Music, any place you know, mm -hmm. and Leon and the People. So just go to our website and um, get your love is a beautiful thing t-shirt and, and uh, what's this what's this kissing movie again because i need to go look that up oh the, pr the price of kissing <laughs> the price of kissing okay yeah. i need to go watch that because you know we're in, we still in size so we're looking for m movies to watch and things to we got different, we got different colored shirts i need to send you another one yes mine is great and it has like the little brown right. letters on right. it yeah. Right. yeah now we got on um, burgundy and black Oh, I like burgundy. That's a good one. Like burgundy one? Mm -hmm. I, like I want a burgundy one. So text me your, your address. I'll make sure you okay. get it. All right. Well, Leon, thank you so much for being on Music Mondays. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not even on camera. What's wrong? Well, well you're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for I being on I got too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and, a good thing. And, Leon, I'm so sorry I missed you in Atlanta. That's okay. On that show, I wasn't there. But this is way better because now you don't have to share me with anybody. So right. Me and you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly thank you so much Leon you know I love you you're my boy um, yeah. I, I always want to see you thrive because you continue to thrive tell JK I love him I miss him oh wait a second JK said to give you a message uh oh what'd he say that's my boy he's doing um, he's doing um, another solo record and he, and he wants you on one of the tracks well that's easy tell him all he has to do is reach out to me call me whatever I got the same number exactly, exactly. I, every so time that's Whatever he says, I go, I guess, good choice. Yes. <laughs> and, and he knows I'm always there for him. I love him. So um, uh, thank you, Leon. And hopefully we can have you on Cocktails with the Queens. That's another new show I'm doing um, okay, for sure. Fox Soul. So we're going to try to steal you for that as well. Oh, yeah. But thank you so is much it, for being. Is, um, it just you? is it just you and ladies? It's me, uh, Vivica Fox, mm -hmm. Lisa Ray McCoy, and Claudia Jordan. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to have to brush my teeth for that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> well, you should have brushed your teeth and just brushed your day. <laughs> Honey, because the ladies will be watching. They have a good time. And it airs um, Monday nights on Fox Soul, so I have to do that tonight uh, with the lovely ladies. They're, okay. they're amazing. I said hello and have fun. I will. And thank you so much. Be safe. Um, stay Corona free, Leon, and stay sucker free as always. Always, got to, got to vote, vote, and vote. Tell the people to vote. Please. Please. All right. Good seeing you, darling. Good to see you, Leon. All right.